everyone, it's Brian Robinson, and I'm back with another design review for peerreviews.dev. Peerreviews.dev is a website that I've created with my friend James Q. Quick, another great YouTuber, uh, to provide design critiques, code reviews, and uh, resume reviews to aspiring developers and designers out there to help everyone up their game as we progress through the industry. So if you are curious to find out what we think about your code, your resume, or your design, go on over and hit up peerreviews.dev, fill out the form on the contact page, and let us know that you want a design review right away. So today, uh, I have a special uh, design review for a guy named JC Smiley. He's actually from the Memphis area, and he's an organizer here in town, uh, doing a lot of great things uh, throughout the community, getting more and more people involved in tech. So this is his, uh, it looks like, according to the URL, his V2 portfolio site. Uh, and so I'm going to give a quick design review uh, about some things that maybe he can uh, improve to up the polish for it. So JC, thanks for submitting, and let's get into it. Uh, so first and foremost, I really like that we have this incredibly friendly picture of you up front, uh, especially with that tagline of software developer and tech meetup organizer. It is a very community-based uh, picture. Now, my one critique in this area is going to be if I don't know who you are, and I do know, know who you are, I might not realize that this is you. Now, obviously, you're the only one looking like directly into the camera, but it's a little bit ambiguous. Uh, so I might look to get, uh, maybe when you're at another one of your meetups, someone to take a, a candid picture uh, that's a little bit more obvious. Maybe if you can get somebody take a picture of, of a whole bunch of people sitting down and maybe you looking over somebody's shoulder at a, at a computer screen, that would be a good candid photo to illustrate, this is me, the person who is standing up. Uh, so our navigational area, uh, I'm going to be perfectly honest, and this is, this is kind of a subjective take, right? Uh, I'm not a big fan of this dark blue. It's a little bit heavy up there. Uh, I might look to lighten it uh, just a little bit. In fact, let's go ahead and dive into the code and see if I can easily find a replacement color. Okay, you are using a CSS Navy uh, keyword, uh, but let's just experiment a little bit because you're an incredibly friendly guy and that navy is just a little just it's too heavy for your personality i think uh and it might be that you start looking away from from blue in fact i actually uh really enjoy the color of your shirt in this picture and it might be something along those lines i might still brighten that up a little bit but just something to be um just a friendlier color that navy is a little too stark i think uh for for who at least i i know you to be uh, and then coming down, I'd also say not quite enough clickable area for your navigation. So just something to think about making uh, these bigger, uh, having bigger padding on those on those anchors up there in your navigation. Uh, I'd also recommend uh, some bigger visual distinction between your headlines in your banner area, right? So your your name up here or whatever you decide your headline is going to be on a, on a given uh, day. I would look at this being much much larger. Uh, so it's at 2.5 RAM right now. Something like four and a half RAM is going to give it a lot of a, a lot bigger weight in the visual hierarchy. So people are going to look much closer uh, at your name. Uh, and then I would also allow for a little less spacing to be happening underneath it. Uh, and I'd also caution against using VHs in a margin situation like this, just because if I switch from uh, like mobile uh, portrait to mobile landscape, my VH gets drastically reduced and it can be pretty awkward in that, in that instance. But we'll keep it in the VHs for now. And I'd say tighten it up maybe to about half of where it is. Uh, and then maybe have less space between your name and this tagline than there is between the tagline and the rest of the content, uh, just to create some groupings happening there. I like that you're bringing in your socials. I think that's very, very important, especially as somebody, you know, maybe shopping around for, for jobs with the portfolio site. I might increase the size of all of this as well uh, and push it away from the bottom uh, from, from your tagline here. I'm going to go ahead and give an element style here, margin bottom. Uh, we'll go ahead and make it just pixel value here. Oh. Oh, interesting. Since you, I'm not great at React, so it looks like that's all being shared amongst all of your... Uh, all of your elements there. But anyway, push that down a little bit more, give it a little bit more spacing, and then increase the font size and the icon size there so that everyone knows those are gonna be three primary calls to action. Uh, I'd also say that the download resume is maybe not the most important call to action on this page, uh, just because they're on your website, 
You've got uh, an about section, a portfolio section. Uh, you can even put a resume page on here uh, in the navigation. Uh, I just think it's maybe not the most important call to action when somebody's already on something that kind of takes the place of a resume for you. Uh, but yeah, I, I've given this feedback to, I think, I think at this point, all of the design reviews I've done so far, uh, when you have a link like this with an icon and a bit of text, make sure to link both of them, right? Make it as easy as possible for a user to get where they're looking to go. So we'll scroll down the page, we got featured project. I would definitely look at giving more spacing between your banner and your next section. So let me take a look at that real fast. Uh, just a quick like margin, bottom, uh, two rem, something like two or three uh, rem, four might be a little too much. Uh, but just to give a little bit of delineation there, just to give the eye a break as it goes on to the next section. Uh, and I'd also do that a little bit between the featured project, the pro, uh, the project name and kind of the card down here. I think giving a little bit more spacing would be good. Uh, I like that you're calling out the technologies used with little icons, I think that's good. I think an image of your application in actual use is super cool. I think that's really awesome. Um, I would make sure that these text areas inside the card are in fact horizontally centered. Uh, the read case study is definitely uh, off to the left-hand side a little bit too much. Looks like we're using Bootstrap, nothing wrong with that. Uh, I would probably recommend instead of using the offsets, I think Bootstrap has some sort of centering class that you can use, uh, or instead of using the offset, let me find that. Let's kill the offsets. So now it's taking, oh, no, still not killed. Anyway, uh, get rid of that margin left and maybe make it a margin auto and then text align center that area, right? So this entire area could be uh, margin auto text align center, and that's gonna give you a true horizontal centering of this area. I'd also recommend looking into doing a button style for this link as well, like making it uh, a first class button in your design, much like what you've got for your download resume right now. Just something to, to give that sense of, I click here to do this thing. Uh, I'd also maybe space things out a little bit between your technologies used and the, uh, the description of the case study as well. Looks like that case study is not working right now, but I'm sure that's just while you're working on V2 of your portfolio. Uh, and then I've also given this feedback on most of the design reviews I've done so far for peer reviews. I need more uh, vertical space at the bottom, right? Uh, I need something to anchor the page because I really, really want to scroll further. And so I, I've recommended uh, adding some sort of footer to a page, right? So a simple uh, dark bar at the bottom, copyright information, uh, but at the very, very least, uh, make sure that on your on your body, you add a padding to the bottom. Uh, so we'll just add, just for the sake of habit here, three rem. And it gives, well, obviously you'll have to figure out where exactly to put that, but it gives a comfortable amount of space uh, for me to play with at the bottom. So I feel like it, it anchors in some way down here, right? So a little bit of an area of a copyright would be great, but also make sure there's margin in between the copyright bar and the projects on the page. But yeah, I, I like this card style. Uh, I like that you've got the rounded corners. I, I always really enjoy that. I might look at maybe putting a just a very fine drop shadow on that. Uh, a lot of card styles nowadays are doing that. It kind of is based out of the material design uh, aspects that Google released uh, years and years ago. But I do still enjoy it. Or a very, very simple border around it would be nice too. A very light gray border. It helps really define that space, especially when you have uh, this kind of light beige-ish background next to white, those two colors don't have quite enough contrast. So if you give a, a, a mid-tone gray in between them, it really helps differentiate the placement of your card at that point. So either a drop shadow that's really, really fine uh, or a one pixel border around it would be good, I think. Coming back up, I, I see now that we've got the sticky navigation. I think that's nice. Um, let me refresh the page so we don't have that green anymore. Uh, I would make sure that on hover, your hover states here, that the text color change uh, isn't so near the background color, right? That contrast is a little bit iffy. It makes it very hard to read when I'm hovering. And a lot of people kind of use hovering on desktop almost in a reading sense. So it's kind of important to make sure that as they hover over it, they can still read it. So we'll head on over to your portfolio. It looks like we're using React to change all these pages. That's perfectly fine. Uh, one thing that I tell all React developers to make sure of if you're doing this whole single page application, uh, make sure that when you change pages that you take the user back up to the top. We get that for free with HTML pages, right? We get that based on the browser at that point, 
But if you're using a spa, right, if you're using a single page application, make sure to scroll the user back to the top uh, when they go to a new page. It's just a, an expected user behavior at that point. All right, so we've got your portfolio, we've got card styles here. Uh, I would say we need a little bit more spacing between your navigation and your uh, your headline here. Uh, again, just to give that kind of, that feeling of breathing space uh, for these. So margin, top, oh, row and white space. Let's just put it on the element. Margin, top, something like, you know, two RAM or something like that will probably be good enough. Uh, so yeah, some, something like that, just to give it that, that kind of section space between your uh, your navigation and where the page starts. It allows the user to breathe a little bit more. I'd also recommend putting a little bit of description text, both for SEO and for, since this is really be functioning as a resume in a lot of ways, uh, it lets you give a little bit more personality to the work below. So just a simple paragraph underneath that, I think would do a lot. And then we've got your actual portfolio items, nice little picture for each one that works out nicely. Oh, we got a GIF, always nice to show things actually in work and you're playing with that same style that we have on the homepage. Again, make sure on these styles that you are horizontal, horizontally centering these. So uh, don't necessarily worry about using classes in Bootstrap for this, just text the line center on those and you're gonna see a much more calculated uh, centering happen there. Overall, it's looking pretty good. Uh, I would say maybe look at adding a top and bottom uh, border on your images because it's kind of hard on some of them since they have white backgrounds to see where it ends and where the actual like margin white space begins. So just give give a little sense so the user never thinks that's a mistake, right? So they, they know that that's where the image ends. Or you can go back in and you can add all your images to have something at the bottom, but border is going to be a way easier way to make that work. Uh, you've got more room to play with, and so I might recommend like maybe breaking up a fourth column in this, or uh, you could rework these um, these cards, right? And you could have the titles like have it be two across, have the title span the entire width, and then have the image and the technologies used in one column, and then break the description out and the links underneath that into another column. So have it be a two column layout for each of your cards that can then break at a mobile size down to this style. Just something to play with. I think that could be very, very interesting because uh, you do have a lot of extra room to play with and these columns are relatively narrow right now. So just give kind of a sense of, of the unexpected to the users and that will also allow for you to put more of these um, badges kind of on one line. I think that could be interesting. So yeah, looking good. Again, uh, maybe some sort of uh, light gray, medium gray border around each of these or a drop shadow. Uh, on this active cases one, I might look at seeing if you can crop this image so it doesn't actually have active cases on it. So maybe it's down below in the actual color block area. Uh, but again, just things to kind of play with along that line. About section, we're gonna use that same color uh, uh, card-ish style. Um, I would say you need to make sure you've got some margin bottom on each of these. Uh, and again, make these wider. I think I think you can play with widths a lot a lot more than you're doing right now. Break outside of the traditional kind of column style that we that we've kind of played with for a long time. Um, yeah, each of the each of these community involvements. That's great. Again, great things in in my community. So I really really appreciate that. Some margin in between each of these would be nice. Hackathons. Hey, Hack Memphis. I run that. Awesome. Uh, and then coming down blog posts, meetups, hobbies. Again, some, some additional vertical space here at the bottom so that I know when the page ends. I think that would be really, really good. And some more spacing in between each of the sections, right? So hobbies needs a little bit more vertical space in between uh, from your uh, community involvement. Uh, and again, I think it'd be nice to have a short statement about who you are as a person right at the top as well. I think that'd be a, a good use of space, push the rest of the content down a little bit. Uh, I think it's gonna go a long way to, to personalizing this even more. Uh, or put a headshot and like a little bit of text, that could be nice as well. So yeah, and then uh, I would say, uh, having some sort of contact page would be nice. Like reach out, find out more about my community involvement, reach out to me to, um, to hire me, to, to do you know whatever. Give, give a call to action uh, in your navigation as well. Some sort of contact page would be, I think, uh, a nice touch on this as well. Uh, but overall, it's, it's, a, it's a nice looking site. Again, um, more vertical spacing is gonna help you out in a long way. Give a, a little bit more of a clear call to action on your homepage banner. Uh, if you set up a contact page of some sort, that could be a good place for it. Or just make your social media larger so that people know like, come find me in these places. This is the call to action that I want you to take on. 
um, just a little bit more delineation about the next obvious user course that you want them to take. But really, really good stuff. Uh, I hope you found a few of these things uh, helpful and that you're able to implement them going forward on your site. And if you're not JC, I hope you found some of this useful as well uh, and are able to kind of abstract this out and take it into your own projects. Uh, so with that, I'm going to call it a day on this review, uh, but I'm going to remind you that if you like this review and you want to see a code review, a design review, or a or a uh, resume review for your content, be sure to head over to peerreviews.dev and sign up to let myself and James know that you're interested in getting a review. And until next time, be sure to go ahead and like this or subscribe to my channel, whether you are on YouTube watching this or on dev.2 watching this, be sure to click that heart button, click that thumbs up and click that subscribe or follow. Thanks a lot and we'll see you next time on the next peer review video. Thank you.